the these remind me of of a conversation that we can have around control because sometimes we can we can approach this from a position of where we feel we have control or where we feel we do not have control and mm -hmm. whether you use that kind of language or simply helping somebody recognizing a difference they can make and to understand what is that potential difference what kind of a difference can you make now? And if you changed a mindset or if we change something, what kind of a difference can you make in the future? And it often comes down to one of two mindsets around this passive notion that control is outside of me. Mm -hmm. I cannot enact, I cannot do anything about my current environment. Or control is within me. I can do it. And I'm wondering, Nolan, how can a how can a leader, as they're creating this environment of self accountability, promote people to have a sense of control within them, instead of keeping it outside of them, where they're like being acted upon, and they instead can't act for themselves as much, or they feel they can't. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the the word that comes to mind as you describe that, Daniel, is victim right? The, this victim mentality that I, I'm a victim, everything's happening to me, I'm out of control, what can I possibly do? Um, so I think, I think sometimes for leaders, and this is a difficult thing to do, but I think sometimes as leaders, we need to help individuals look in the mirror and, and realize that they are responding that way. Um, a gentle way to do it, uh, would simply be to to frame a question and to say, well, Daniel, I, I understand there are all these difficulties and all of these challenges, many of which we don't control. Let's, let's turn that around and ask ourselves, what do we control? Where can we influence? And, and so that, that's a gentle way without saying, hey, Daniel, you're acting like a victim. <laughs> we don't have to, we don't have to say it that way. But we can reframe and redirect people's thinking uh, in a simple way like that. Now, some people may need to be hit between the eyes, so to speak, right? They may need very blunt, very direct feedback. And as leaders, that's, you know, that's one of the difficult uh, assessments and decisions that we need to make. At what point does someone need that to really wake up and to realize that they are not owning their situation, they're, they're, acting like a victim. Um, so again, I, I, for me, so much of this is, is being thoughtful about how we approach someone and not, not trying to be black and white about everything, um, but having these underlying principles of care, concern, and wanting an individual to succeed, how can we get to a place like that? I love it because you're reinforcing and reminding all of us to check our intent as well. What is our intent by virtue of why we want to have this conversation in the first place? Is it yep. to make sure to prove we're right? Or rather, is it to help care for love and get things done? Because yeah, exactly. I, I keep going back to that care and empathy. You can say, yes, this is hard time. Yes. What can we now do about it, though? Right. What, what could we do to keep mm -hmm. it going? I yeah, exactly it. right. It's it's always it's always that balance, um, and and yet, I'll be the first to say we need to deliver results. That's why we're in business. That's why we hire and employ people is to accomplish certain results. Um, and so, if if that's the case. Yeah, we absolutely have to focus there.